to go. Beating the clock. Court length. That's intercepted. Murray good at the go. 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 This might be one of the craziest shots I've ever seen. A one-legged three-quarter court heave while walking the sideline like a tightrope, and it's nothing but net. In fact, this is one of the rarest postseason moments of all time. Because Jamal Murray's 55-foot moon-scraping three was the sixth longest recorded shot in NBA playoff history. Only five other players have ever made a deeper three in the postseason. J.R. Smith knocked down a 60-foot runner in the 2018 playoffs, Steph Curry lasered in a 62-footer back in 2015, T.J. Ford banked one in from 65 feet, Mo Williams drained a 67-foot bomb in 2009, and of course, Darius Miller with his playoff record 72-foot missile back in 2018. By the numbers, Jamal Murray hit one of the most unlikeliest long-range shots in postseason history. And for that reason, this video is dedicated to some of the most fascinating stats about the 2024 NBA playoffs. Want to know a crazy stat that I read the other day? LeBron James, Kevin Durant, and Stephen Curry aren't featured in the second round of the NBA playoffs for the first time in 20 years. That's 6,936 days. Many of us have spent our entire lives watching these legends dominate the postseason year in and year out. Finals run after finals run, championship after championship, and now for the first time in two decades, they're gone. These icons have been replaced by high-flying, shot-creating, always complaining, young superstars. It's been in the making for a few years now, but I think the torch has officially been passed, and it's been a breath of fresh air. Edwards on the steal. Edwards, oh, what a move to the rack! The arrival of new faces has also revived a number of teams that have been dead in the water for years. The Indiana Pacers made it to the second round for the first time since 2014, and with their sweep over the Pelicans, OKC won a playoff series for the first time in eight years. But no team has broken their playoff curse like the Minnesota Timberwolves. Until they swept the Suns in the first round of this year's playoffs, the franchise hadn't won a series in over 20 years, all the way back in 2004. When Kevin Garnett was the league's MVP, LeBron was a rookie, and Victor Wembanyama was a four-month-old baby. It's been an eternity, but the Wolves are finally back into championship contention. But if you thought they struggled to find postseason success, I introduce you to the LeBron Cavaliers. After a grueling seven-game series with the Orlando Magic, the Cavs won a playoff round without LeBron for the first time in 31 years. To put this into context, Larry Nance Sr. was on the last team that had won a series without LeBron in 1993, and his son, Larry Nance Jr., was just four months old at the time. He would go on to have a four-year college basketball career, get drafted into the NBA, play for numerous teams including Cleveland, and he just wrapped up his ninth season in the league. He did all of that in the same time that it took the Cavs to win just one playoff series without LeBron. Easily one of the wildest stats I've ever seen. And speaking of wild, we gotta talk about Jalen Brunson. This dude went on one of the craziest heaters I think I've ever seen in the postseason. 47, 40, 41, and 43 points in four consecutive games? When you think of an inferno, you think of this guy. Brunson became just the fourth player in NBA history to record such a feat, joining Jerry West, Bernard King, and Michael Jordan. Legends of the game. If I told you two years ago that this was a possibility, you'd probably slap me right in my face. Which is what makes this stat so insane. And there's more to it. During this stretch, Brunson also managed to record five assists in every single game, which is something that even West, King, and MJ 
weren't able to do during their scoring streaks, which makes Jalen the only player in NBA history to record 40 points and 5 assists in 4 consecutive playoff games. My mind is blown. As we're talking about a New York Nick, it would be a disservice not to mention what Josh Hart has been doing this postseason. For those of you who aren't familiar, Josh Hart is essentially a 6'4 Dennis Rodman. If the dude smells a rebound, best believe he'd fully sprint off of a mountain to go get it. In the playoffs, Hart is averaging over 13 rebounds per game. The only other players that are doing this are towering centers in Nikola Jokic and Jarrett Allen. The dude is doing something that we have never seen before. Because in NBA history, there have been 259 instances where a player averaged over 13 rebounds per game for an entire playoff run. Of those 259, there has only been one individual that has done it at 6 foot 4 or shorter. That one is Josh Hart. His instincts and straight up ferociousness allows him to rebound like a top 5 center in the league. But what's also helped him grab so many boards is the absurd amount of minutes that he's played. Through the first 8 games of these playoffs, Hart played 374 of a possible 389 minutes. In other words, he was on the court 96% of the time. In fact, it's the most minutes played through the first 8 games of the playoffs since tracking began. This dude is a sicko. You know how dogs have the zoomies, where they have a sudden burst of energy and run like a madman for a period of time? That is Josh Hart. The dude has infinite energy, rarely takes breaks, and will sacrifice his life for a rebound. With Hart and Brunson, the Knicks have been must-see TV this postseason, and if you've been keeping up with them, you've witnessed some of the most chaotic and mesmerizing late-game finishes we've ever seen. With clutch shot, tries another three-pointer. Oh, it's good! After clutch shot, after clutch shot. With an offensive rebound. Another chance here. He's got it. And it's been the theme of this year's playoffs. On April 22nd, Dante DiVincenzo got the ball out of a scramble and hit the game-winning three. That same night, Jamal Murray beat the buzzer to defeat the Lakers. Four nights later, Chris Middleton turned into a prime Kobe, not once, but twice. Seconds later, Tyrese Halliburton comes down and hits the game-winning floater. Three nights after that, Jamal Murray hit a runner to eliminate the Lakers from the playoffs. The next night, Tyrese Maxey does his best Reggie Miller impression to save Philly's season. A week later, DiVincenzo hits another huge three to seal a Game 1 win against the Pacers. And four days after that, Andrew Nemhard had no business shooting this 30-foot step back three, but he hit nothing but court to take the lead and eventually seal the game. These playoffs have been the definition of insanity. Through the first two rounds, we've already seen 15 shots to tie or take the lead with a minute left in the fourth quarter or overtime. Statistically, this has been one of the most intense and exciting playoffs of the last decade. In fact, here's the amount of last minute clutch shots that there's been in every postseason of the last 10 years. Only 2019 can compete with this season, which featured Kawhi's game winner against Philly and Dame's 37 foot bomb to delete OKC. Other than that, no other year has come close. Well, that's until you hit 2014. By the numbers, 2014 was by far the most electrifying first two rounds of playoff basketball that we've seen in the last decade. Lillard's series winner against the Rockets. It's Lillard. He got the shot off. Lillard. Vince Carter's corner three to beat the buzzer against the Spurs. Yes! Yes! And the most legendary shot of those playoffs a Kendrick Perkins putback to tie the game. A moment etched in NBA history. Okay, 
All jokes aside, 2014 was an incredible year for playoff basketball. And by the numbers, the 2024 postseason has been one of the most exhilarating playoffs in recent memory. From flex-worthy heaves, new faces in the mix, record-breaking performances, topped off with some of the greatest clutch shooting we've ever seen. The 2024 NBA playoffs have definitely not disappointed. Let me know in the comments some of the craziest stats that you've seen about this postseason. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.